welcome back, my scrubs, to another episode of Danganronpa. Come on, you guys deserve a clap. Like, it, it deserves to be celebrated that you guys have smashed 30k likes every single episode. Uh, like, I don't even know what episode this is, but either way, I'm super excited. You guys have no idea, like, how fun it is for me to come in here and record this game uh, every episode. You guys just smash it. So, without further ado, if you guys want to keep the series going, make sure to hit that like goal of 30k likes. I usually don't like asking for like goals, but... It's, I think it's a great way for us to be accountable to each other. You hit the like goal, I'll keep making the episodes because I tend to stop <laughs> a series in the middle because, you know, I just don't see the support, but I feel it. I feel the support. Never underestimate the power of the weebs and Danganronpa because here we go. Uh, last episode was absolutely ridiculous. All right, now it's time for some spoiler territory. If you, if you haven't seen it, go check it out last episode. Ladies and gentlemen, Chihiro is now dead. But how did she die is what we need to find out this episode. This is insane. It's freaking crazy, man. What? I don't know how long it took for me to fully comprehend the reality of what I was looking at, but as soon as I did... <laughs> appropriate reaction? A wild almost primal scream. A pre... Prim... Prim... What? Prim... Primival? Prim I've never heard that word escape from my mouth. Dang. Deadly light. What? Right, so the chapter's not over? I've never seen that before. I tried to suppress my screaming, but it was useless. It surged out of me like water from a spring gushing out of the ground. Well, of course you would. Biakuya, on the other hand, is probably laughing. Very strange. Most unusual, don't you think? Okay, so he wasn't laughing, but yeah. He was totally calm, almost like he'd been watching this all unfold in front of a TV screen. He's so harmless. Biakuya, I do not like him. <laughs> Look, Chihiro's corpse had been suspended somehow. Yeah, they did go through a lot of trouble to do that, didn't they? And something's been written on the wall in blood. Bloodlust. Hmm. Such a brutal way to kill someone. No, this is beyond brutal. Wouldn't you agree? They killed her. How could it not be brutal? Hmm. No, that's not my point. This murder is far too bizarre for any everyday amateur to have committed it. Okay, all right. I mean, this, is where, this is the part of the episode where I get into predictions because it's like... I want to see how correct I could be and how good of a detective I am, all right? I, I think it's really cool how you guys discussed it in the comments. I tried not to read them, though, because of spoilers. But just the fact that Biafkia said it was too brutal and kind of crazy that she was suspended like that, uh, think about it. There's only two options. Either Sakura, who is strong enough to lift her up and tie her there, and it's in the girls' locker room, uh, or it was actually two people working together to do that. Now, who? I don't really know. I feel bad for the girls because Sakura is going to get them all. <laughs> Unlike with Sayaka, this murder was not a crime of passion or necessity. It's almost as whoever did this did it for fun. You see what I mean, don't you? What? My hand was swimming. <laughs> I was still reeling, too confused to understand what he was trying to say. And before I could even begin to clear my head. What the heck? Hey, I heard screaming just oh my god! <laughs> uh, what a what a scene to walk in on, right? Ding dong, bing bong. Once again. All right, let's see what the bear has to say about it. A body has been discovered. Ah, uh, no, crap, Monokuma. After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin. Dang, just jumping right into it. Yes, yeah, so I, I like how the game's finally picking up now that we ac actually know how the class trials go and everything. So it's going to go a lot faster, I believe. What the heck was that? What? That's right, you were unconscious during Sayaka's, so you don't know about it. You just heard the body discovering announcement. Apparently, when three or more people discover a body or announce it plays, or discover a body and announce it plays to let everyone know, I imagine it's so that the search for the culprit can proceed fairly for everyone involved. Proceed fairly. The body discovery announcement, then Chihiro really is dead. Yes. Yes. The, the, the. Before you start screaming your head off, go around, every, go around everyone up. It seems another game has begun. Again, like, I get it. It's crazy, but this is what was gonna happen. I just didn't expect it to happen like that. Let's find out. Inspector Gadget mode activated. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Sakura, I think Sakura was actually, like, friends with her. I couldn't keep her safe. I just still, I don't know. Like, I think... I feel like she would be the one to do it, though. So there's another victim. <laughs> Which means we are now in the same position once again. Yeah. Yeah, we got like two heartless characters in this game. That's one of them. That girl, that is. Even he has a heart and he's like awful. <laughs> it's a dream. This is a dream. It's all a dream. Oh, third, third theory. C 
could also be possible that uh, you know someone got in there, right? One of the guys, because they, I, I kind of, I kind of like pictured that happening as well. All right, well, let's uh, let's examine. Okay, oh my god, well, there's a dumbbell with clear pink paint on there. <laughs> no, there are more important things to worry about right now. Okay, wait, so what is this phase again? I just want to figure out who did it. I guess they want me to talk to everyone. All right. The word bloodlust is written all over the wall. So... I don't think this is any kind of dying message. It's just too strange. But you know, that thing about writing bloodlust in blood, doesn't it sound kind of familiar? Oh, the horror no- oh, or no, I'm sorry, not the horror novel, but the mystery novel that he was reading. Oh, okay, so, like, quite a few episodes back now, they did mention a, a serial killer. They were thinking that maybe a serial killer actually get, got into the school and was killing people and not any of us, and apparently he would write bloodlust on the wall. So that's really weird that they would do that, whoever got whoever killed her. But there's no way that's it. They're just trying to be weird about it. But I feel now I'm suspecting freaking um Byakuya because now he's the one reading the novels and talked about it. What is Oh, uh, I love it that this game is like so hard to figure out sometimes. Perhaps it's the work of real genocide Jack. No, it's not. He's here in the school. No way. There's no way. Yeah, I don't really think there is a uh a, a way at all. What is it now? Toko! Hina was pointing towards the entrance to the girls' locker room. Ah! Toko was the last to arrive, and now she's just standing there. No, why? Why? Oh. Okay, well, she's uh, obviously surprised, shaken up about this a little bit. A little too dramatic for my taste. <laughs> oh, she... Okay. She fainted! That didn't sound good! Toko? Hina rushed over to, to the collapsed Toko and uh, tried to shake her awake. Toko, are you okay? Come on, wake up. Oh. Oh, that's right. I just remember what she said about she faints every time she sees blood. It's just oh. pink. <laughs> this isn't a violation of the rules, right? I mean, technically she passed out somewhere else besides her room. Don't think that counts. Toko- Oh, so she actually woke up. Yeah, as in she literally jumped up from where she was laying. It was such a strange reaction. It was- I was at a total loss for words. She leapt straight up into the air, changing her stance as she did. What the heck is wrong with her? Holy crap. In no time flat, she was just standing up, ignoring the physical contorts that she had to go through. Her emotions were totally haphazard. What? Sorry about that. I was just so shocked, you know. It happens, right? Was I the only one? Oh my god, that face. <laughs> Toko, are you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine. Whoa, is that a dead body? Uh, hey, are you dead? Dude, this girl's so freaky. She scares me so much. She must have hit her head. <laughs> The world has a front and back, a top inning and a bottom, a sea of truth and a web of lies. Oh, no. This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. No, 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 everything's fine. At least the stutter's all gone. <laughs> That's a good thing, right? I see. It's all clear to me that everything is not fine. Your eyes seem strangely vacant. Oh. It might be best if we take her back to her room for the time being. So, um... Oh my god, now I have another theory. There's so many theories springing up. Maybe she fainted and did this. It could be possible that someone killed someone and didn't even know it. I don't know, because that's freaking weird. That's got to be like a, cl a clue or something. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Huh? Okay, so Monokuma did uh, just confirm that it was by us. It wasn't like a random serial killer. But don't take it as a bad thing. It's just a fact of life, because that's how graduation works. Yeah, we all know that's how the game's supposed to be played. Okay. Oh, so here's another interesting rule. In any one killing game, the guilty party may only kill a maximum of two people. Are you saying two people are going to die in one? Well... I guess it kind of happened with Sayaka and Junko, but that wasn't really exactly the same. But they can only kill two people. All right. What? I don't remember any rule like that. I just came up with it. I mean, if one person went around and killed everyone, your lovely student life would be all over, right? The new rule has been added to the regulations menu. In that case, why not limit it to one person? Well, in good mystery, you don't want to miss out on at least the potential of a serial killer angle. Just one would totally murder that possibility. Very well for now, I'll catch you guys at the class trial. I can't say I understand uh, his thinking, but if we can kill up to two people, then one person's life could still be in danger. Oh, crap. Would they actually kill someone during an investigation? All right, it's time for investigation. I love this part of the game. It's fun. It makes me feel so smart. All right, so Byakuya is gonna investigate with us. I mean, you are extremely on thin ice, dude. All right, so. Stop talking. You better not do anything suspicious. All right, first off, first of all, the dumbbell, right? Let's check the dumbbell. It's a blood stain. Well, I knew that already. <laughs> okay, so the Monokuma file, uh, which is what we get every time someone dies, right? Uh, there was a blow to the head with a blunt object, and that's obviously what did it. All right, so let's read it. The victim was Shihiro Fujisaki. The time of death is estimated to be around 2 a.m. 
The body was discovered in the girl's locker room. Dang, that's a weird time. Why would she go into the girl's locker room so late? It's on the second floor of the school. The cause of death was a blow to the head with a blood object. She was killed instantly. All right, well, a dumbbell would definitely do that. But the question now is why... Why is that poster have blood on it? All right, so so she just like got the dumbbell. It's like, ah! And then it just... I'm just trying to figure it out. <laughs> All right, what about this on the ground here? It must have been splattered with blood during the murder. Okay, well, that was pointless. Okay, what about her? I can feel the life draining out of my body. It's a dead body. Chihiro's dead Very body. Strange. But the more I look, the more strange it all seems. This must be Genocide Jack's handiwork. It's... Uh, why would he keep saying that? Well, but... What? But we're still not sure he did it. Is that what you want to say? <laughs> I wonder about that. Hmm. Are you saying that, like, one of us is him? Is it him? <laughs> is it you? It's probably you, isn't it? Maybe he's dressed up as Sakura. I knew that wasn't a girl. <laughs> okay, there's like nothing else to really examine. I think we've examined it all, really. So Sakura thinks she came here on her own by choice. Yeah, why would you say that? She'd been talking a lot lately about how she wanted to get stronger, so they're saying that she came here to exercise. She did mention that she, she thought she was weak. But according to the Monokuma file, apparently she was killed around 2 in the morning. Would she really have been exercising that late? Perhaps. He nor myself are usually in the locker room during the day, so she was probably avoiding it then. Avoiding it. Although we invited her to join us more than once, she never showed up, so I can only assume she was trying to avoid us. So that's why she was doing it so late at night, because she was like embarrassed. She did want to start exercising, but she specifically mentioned that she couldn't do it by herself. She needed support from others. So you're saying she could have come in here in the middle of the night to train in secret, but that also she could have come with someone else. It's a possibility, I think. That's, uh, it's a little conflicting, but what do you have to say? Dude had a real complex about being weak. You heard Chiro talk about it, right? I need to get stronger. Yeah, I do remember she said that more than once. Sure did, which I guess explains the trip down here. But did she really need to get stronger that badly? You already mentioned it, but she was a girl after all. Most girls are, aren't all that strong. I don't know, man. Haven't really thought about all that stuff until you see Sakura. I can't help but think of what it might be. Why, why was she like that? Now I believe it's about time for us to move on. Already? What? New clues won't magically appear by standing around here. Okay, good. Uh, go. I like that the game is, is directing us where to go, at least. This place is related to the investigation? Uh, figure it out for yourself. It's no fun if you don't, right? Well, she didn't get shot. <laughs> we know that much. All right, is there anything unusual here? I don't see. I guess we could look at this. If I remember right, the card reader is meant to work with uh, our handbooks, right? Do you have an issue with it? If so, you should take it up with Monokuma. He said that, then quickly and sharply clapped his hands together. Did you call for me? <laughs> he has to be... Has he been domesticated? It seems that Makoto has a question for you. You need something? What's up? Well, it's just about this card reader. Yeah. The card readers have all been designed to interface with each of our handbooks. Your handbooks. You can only enter the locker room corresponding to the gender listed in your individual handbook. <laughs> And it's impossible for two people in a row to go through uh, while the door is unlocked, right? If there was some sort of uh, erotic terrorist on the prowl, <laughs> the silly mounted Gatling would kill them, yeah. And the school's regulations prohibit anyone from lending someone else a handbook, right? Of course. Okay, so they couldn't do that. So then, that means they said lending. No one said anything about stealing. Just saying. That means only girls can go in the locker room and only boys can go in the boys' locker room. In other words, Shiro's body being found in the girls' locker room means that a girl did it. So crap, maybe it's not Byakuya. Hey Makoto, I can see right through you. See right through me? Allow me to tell you what you're thinking. Since Shiro was found in the girls' locker room, the killer must have been able so to get in there. Words. And it's one of the girls. Did I get it right? Good lord, you're simple. Well, yeah, I mean, that's obvious. But am I wrong though? <laughs> you should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer has been in front of you the entire time. Loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited, but the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Borrowing someone else is perfectly fine. You mean stealing? That's a, that's essentially what I said. Can we agree on that? Okay, so a guy could have done it. All right, let's head to the main hall. The main hall? That'll help you understand what's going on. All right, we came to the main hall. So what are we looking for here? Does that mean I have to figure it out for myself? Of course. Could there be something inside? Oh, it's an e-handbook. Wait, there's three of them, but what are they doing here? Hmm. So you finally found them. Did you know these were here? <laughs> I happened to find them by chance of myself the other day. It seems like there's a system in place where the handbooks of dead students get delivered to this mailbox. Oh! Sayaka and Junko never had a chance to use their handbooks. So someone just came in and, and took it. They were dead, so they didn't break the rules. They just took their handbook. Easy. Easy. That's strange. One of the handbooks won't turn on. Is it broken? Whose is it? The other handbook showed Junko's name when I started it up. Then the one that won't turn on must be Leon's, right? I see. It would make sense, yes. 
After all, he did get pummeled with dozens and dozens of baseballs. Pummeled with baseballs. Okay, yeah, that's right. The memory of it came flooding back. The cruel punishment which led to Leon's death. The execution, the, yeah, yeah, we know, we remember. Uh oh, <laughs> he's angry. <laughs> Why? What? That e handbook is essential to student life. You're a crucial I integral instrument, a super big deal. There's no way you could break that easy, but it did. Impossible. If I said it wouldn't break, it wouldn't break and break. It can withstand up to 10 tons of pressure and it's waterproof to 100 meters, okay? I don't care how many baseballs you would hit it with, it wouldn't do crap. But uh, even my amazing handbook does have one single weak point. It does? I can't hear but you. it's a secret. Ah, all right, all right. Then Leon must have broken it somehow without realizing that it's what its weakness was, right? Hmm. Hard to say. You know what I think? I think this handbook isn't actually broken. What? But you might say, how could that be? <laughs> Leaving the question hanging in the air. Is it not charged? <laughs> I mean, I would assume if something has electricity, it needs to be charged. He keeps talking about Genocide Jack, so he really thinks that he's around here. Bro, I, I, I think it's you. Then you really think, you truly believe that he is actually here, or he killed Chihiro. Absolutely, I have no idea that Gen- I have no doubt that Genocide Jack is the corporate in this case. I will reply. Reaction. The murderous fiend is Genocide Jack, right? There's no one else it could be. A murderous fiend who kills again and again using a bizarre and brutal method. They're like a ghost attacking suddenly, then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. And what nickname did the internet give to this mysterious serial killer? Yeah. They say he's killed thousands of people, but that's gotta be an urban legend. Still. Could one of us really be a demented, psychotic killer like that? You're not wrong to consider, but words mean little right now. I'll tell you who's psychotic right now. It's that freaking gothic girl. She's obviously crazy. But, on the other hand, Toko, right? Toko, the girl, Yandere girl, is also very weird. I think I have actually boiled it down to those two people. I think. Could be wrong, though. Oh, and he says, I have a basis to believe that, I assure you. Why? There's somewhere I'd like to take you. This will provide with all the evidence you need. All clear. Evidence that Genocide Jack is one that killed Chihiro. Evidence does something like that, really? Hey, you two! Oh, big trouble. I need your help. Oh, crap, no! We're busy. Leave us alone. But it's an emergency. Oh, God, who's dead? Who's dead? Please, you gotta help me! She needs donuts again. <laughs> Last episode, she wanted donuts. Okay, alright, I'll go. Waifu. I, I gotta, I gotta stop. I'm sorry, Pyaki. I gotta stop and help Waifu, okay? Just calm down! I mean... But it's an emergency! Okay. What is it? No. Something's wrong with Toko. She's actually super strange. Well, you didn't have to say that. I knew that already. What What should we do, Byakuya? Since it's Toko, I must admit I'm intrigued. I suppose we could take a second to see what's going on with her. Don't make Bro, that's- it's- myself. I think it's her! Woo! She, this is just making me really, like, glad that I did not pick her as wife. She was definitely too scary for me. Alright, I guess I'm gonna go in and see if it'll work. Is Toko inside? Some kind of emergency? Oh. What is it? You guys are too slow. I think you're just too fast. <laughs> so, what's the emergency? Well, after what happened in the girl's locker room, we left Toko in her room so she could lay down. After a while, we came back to check on her, you know, to see how she was doing, but when we did, it was weird. She refused to come out and she kept saying all this weird stuff. Weird stuff. That's fine. We should try talking to her. Okay, let's talk to her. Yes. Alright, let's give it a shot. Ding dong! Ding dong! <laughs> The door swung open slowly and silently. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> Holy crap! An aura of negativity flowed out from behind the door, forcing a gasp out of me. Oh, uh, nothing. Yeah, voice acting. It's just that uh, Hina was really worried about you, pulling yourself up in your room. Leave me alone. Um, yeah, sure thing. But could you open up just for a second? You won't allow it. Huh? You won't let Genocide Jack have control. It was her! She has split personalities, but I thought the same thing about the other girl too, so this game's just freaking crazy, man. It's bonkers. Well, bro, that just confirms it. It's her. She did it. Unless... <laughs> this is getting crazy, I know, right? But be with me. Unless someone knew that... Oh my god. Byakuya knew that. So Byakuya revealed his own plan to throw us off and to prove that it was her because he knew that she was crazy. I mean, it even makes sense because last episode she was stalking him and I think he knew this. And it was being, it was just trying to play it really cool and so he killed her. That's what I think. And he even knew where, he even knew that she was dead. 
Of course, he's the one that did it. <laughs> my theories keep updating, I know. But come on, it's a good theory. And just like that, she slammed the door in my face. What was that? She's been acting like that this whole time. It's just like anime. We get flashbacks like when something just happened. Um... It doesn't make any sense, right? Oh, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. It felt like something was holding it shut on the other side. I couldn't even budge it. Coco was scared enough to even bar her door. Does she think the same thing as Biaki? No, no, I uh, I think I'm right on the money. I really do. All right, so someone needs to pers persuade her. Well, I have somebody. <laughs> her boy toy over here. Ashkuru, man, come on, do it. Oh, yeah, he's gonna do it. Okay, <laughs> he actually helps. A few moments later. What do you want? <laughs> oh, Bakula, what? <laughs> what? I'm sorry I couldn't keep her promise. I'm sorry. I expect them to start voice acting. They'd really do it randomly. But don't worry. Never again. What promise? I won't let Genocide Jack ever have control ever again. Promise? And with that, the door slams shut. Even Byakuya could pull it off. There's nothing else we can do. Let's get back to the investigation. What was that promise? Uh, I have no idea. Another one of her delusions, I'm sure. Oh, you're so guilty. You're so guilty. They could have worked together to do it. He may have tricked her. Oh my god. I have <laughs> Oh my god. He could have tricked her because he knew that he she liked her. Yes. Perhaps. Perhaps he could have manipulated her into killing her. And that was the promise. Maybe she's not actually Genocide Jack, but she believes that she is due to his mind games that he can play. I'm still on to this. I don't know yet though, guys. If I say I don't know, it means I don't know. Oh, you acting suspicious, dude. I don't like you. <laughs> From day one. From day freaking one. Without a reply, Biakia sped away. Biakia! And I heard to catch up. All right. I tried to talk to him several times as we walked, but he didn't even look back, let alone say anything. I mean, that's super weird. Finally, his feet brought him to a, a certain room. The library. <laughs> Come on, let's go in. But it is weird that he would like lead me to all these clues, you know? It's almost like he's trying to paint a narrative or a picture that he wants to paint, that he wants us to see, which is why I think he manipulated her. Um, is the evidence that proves it was Genocide Jack really in the library? Don't make me repeat my- Okay, all right, I won't. Thank you when we look at them. Oh, is in here? We've never been in here. This is the archive, right? Hurry up and go inside. Here. Let's go. Yeah, it's, it's super weird that he's just directing us everywhere. Last time we didn't do that. Wow, there's so many books and files and so much dust too. So in other words, I would say there's enough value in this place to endure the dust. All right, so we picked up a file. You have one sharp eye to indeed select that file, huh? That's, right. That's the report on the presidential assassination. The original is kept at the National Library. It won't be declassified for another 30 years. Are you sure you want to look at it now? <laughs> there's no telling whose crosshairs you might wind up in for peeking at it. At this school, really? <laughs> Without making a sound, I return the files to the shelf. Those documents are dangerous. Dangerous? They, de they detail all the people who control the world from behind the scenes. Dangerous truth for a commoner. You mean like members of the Diet or something? What the heck is that? The secret council controlling everything from the shadows. If you're ready to be to if you're ready to be disappeared for it, take a look. There are some very interesting people in there. You're just kidding, right? Am I? I'll just let it go for now. He's directing us simply like, to a certain spot. There's a wooden box that's empty. Although judging by the smudges on the dust, it looks like something was inside. I wonder what it was. Hmm. There was an extension cord plugged in, which you use for your lamp, stupid. Hey, what about this? It's a desk lamp. Oh yeah, it's the same one I saw Byakuya using in the library. What? Do you have a problem with the lamp? It was here before, then I moved it over there. It's too dark over there, so I thought I'd put it to good use. Money, yay! What about the file that you're standing behind? Or in front of... Okay, he won't let me. He won't let me do it. Okay, so they're, they're investigation reports related to different cold cases for police eyes only. So are you beginning to understand the true splendor of this library? So Genocide Jack is... Oh, there's going to be pictures of like what he did. Okay. Okay, so... To summarize it, just to make the episode shorter for you guys, because it's really not... I don't want to read every single thing. I just think it's boring for you guys. He just, he's, he keeps going on about how all the files in here are gathered from around the world, possibly by Monokuma, just to provide us with things to do, probably for the murder things, and I'm sure this one. Uh, he's saying that they're genuine, like really crazy files that like the government doesn't want people to see. And he says he reviewed them multiple times, but why? Why would he do that? So you're saying you've read all the documents more than once, but all this has to be like top secret confidential stuff, right? Hmm. 
My family has a reading room just like this at our home. It's uh, bigger, of course, and not as dusty. Hmm. Members of the Togami family have access to variety, a variety of government-related documents. That includes foreign powers as well as domestic. How is that possible? So I already told you, there's a secret council that controls the world from the shadows. Are you saying you're that council? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what he's saying. But why would you tell me all of this? And within me, the bloodline that allowed me to one day uh, bend the world to my will. But to become such a ruler, I must uh, know all levels of this world backwards and forwards. So whichever, so whenever I have time, I like to review whatever documents and materials that interest me. Which is why I can proclaim without a doubt that the materials gathered here are the real thing. This is beyond believing or believing, not believing. Bianca is actually starting to scare me more than the actual mastermind. Yeah. And what always interested me was the cold case police investigation reports. Reading those have been a hobby of mine since I was little. Alright, so I have a feeling he's gonna basically talk about... Obviously, uh, Genocide Jack. Yep, I, I see it coming. It's just kind of obvious when you think That's about right. it. Okay, so there's two notable characteristics in his murder thingy. The first characteristic is every crime scene, the word bloodless is painted on there. Which, this is all fueling my, my theory of him just controlling all of this. And the second is that when the victims are murdered, their bodies are suspended in a certain way. And he knows it very well. Let's remember that. Save your surprise, the best part is yet to come. For the second characteristic where the victims are suspended, the only ones who knew about that particular fact were members of the police and other higher-ups. By all accounts, nobody in the media ever found out. Hmm. In other words, no one on the news, no one online, nobody knew about that aspect of each crime except for you. The only key officials and the killer himself knew about this act of mounting the victim. Hmm. Now, if you recall Chiro's corpse, her body was most certainly mounted in this fashion. Yes. So how could the killer have known about suspending the victim? That's, right. That's the key question, but in fact the answer is quite simple. So the culprit words, isn't a copycat killer, it's the real Genocide Jack. In other words... That right there is the evidence that Genocide Jack has himself hidden among us. Maybe it's him. <laughs> the Genocide Jack is such a brutal fiendish killer, really is walking around among us. Interesting. Things are really starting to get interesting, are they? I never imagined a killer would be with such a reputation would ever become part of our little game. Now, don't you think it would be good for you to take a look at what I've already seen? You might just manage to ferret out a clue or two. If you get down on your knees and beg, I might even show you myself. Despicable. I could see through your stupid lies. She loved him so much, she would do anything for him, which is why they made that promise. God, it's so obvious. I'm probably wrong, though. You <laughs> watch. Oh, okay. All right, so we're actually, we're actually asking to see the file itself. Feel free to look at it here, but you can't take it with you. What are you, my boss? What are you, my mom? <laughs> Yaku handed me the file and I flipped through it with tense, nervous fingers. It can't be worse than what we've seen already. Suddenly, my hand stopped. I had reached the page where photos from the scene of each crime had all been collected. The names of Genocide Jack's victims ran on for several pages. The one thing that became perfectly clear as I read was all the killer's countless victims were killed and suspended exactly the same way. At the end of the scene, every murder of the word bloodlust was written on the wall. Profiling results, all the crimes took place either on weekdays, at night, or during holidays, either day or night. The most common time for the killings to take place was on holidays in the afternoon. Based on these facts, it could be suggested that the suspect may be a student. Evidence suggests that the suspect lingered at the scene, but when they did leave, they were in a panic. Because an eyewitness has never come forward, it's unlikely there was any external reason for this. This, con this confused behavior suggests that the suspect may potentially suffer from dissociative identity disorder. So in other Ooh, words... You just... I knew it. It's him. It's him. It's him. It's him. I don't care what no one says. I'm not... I'm, I'm gonna... Even if... I swear it's him. Alright, get this freaking class trial going already, though. Okay, where are we going? Anywhere but here. We finished our business, haven't we? Wait, Bianca! Yeah, answer my freaking questions, man. Well, this is where we part ways. I have some things I need to take care of before the class trial. Yeah, preparations. Okay. Just all of a sudden like that? Come on, enough of your annoying mis uh, misapprehensions. Did you really think we'd be together the whole time? Take responsibility for yourself and do something useful. Move the investigation forward on your own. Goodbye. Goodbye. And just like that, he was gone. Just as quickly as he asked me to join, he cut me off. In the end, I felt like I was just some plaything getting tossed around. At the same time, I, I covered some really important clues to thank him. Genocide Jack, he's the one that killed Chihiro. And that murderous fiend is one of us. But who is it? I have to find that part out no matter what it takes. And to do that, there's somewhere I have to investigate one more time. I have to go back to the crime scene, the girls' locker room. And, and I should check the boys' locker room. The others might have come up with some info. Okay. Yeah, I thought we should probably check the guys' locker room. Well, this looks a lot- What? What? Why has this been changed? Wait a minute, that looks like something- What? 
That looks like something that would definitely be on the other one, right? This wasn't here before. I know because I freaking checked. This poster. It's a popular boy band called Tornado. And it's, yeah, that's what would be in the girls' locker room. It doesn't fit the boys' locker room. Why was that switched over? Oh my god. I'm trying to uh, brainstorm! <laughs> or it'd be like Jimmy Neutron. Brain Blast! Uh, that's what my, this is what this game makes me feel like sometimes. But yeah, that's weird. That's why I was like, why is the same poster in that one? That didn't make any sense, especially given the nature of the poster. It's very odd for the killer to switch it. Why would they? That's the thing I can't figure out. Oh my god! Someone took a crap on the floor. Okay, what is it? A strange stain. Ugh. Awful. <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you what it actually probably is. It's probably blood that was tried. To, they tried to clean it up, but they couldn't exactly clean it. But wait a minute. Why would there be blood in here? And what does that have to do with the poster being changed? This is a very tricky mystery indeed. I haven't figured it out yet. But perhaps Chihiro is the one that came in here first and attacked somebody. I don't know. That's all I know. I'm not gonna brainstorm too much. You got some evidence. All right. Evidence, what did you find? Mm -hmm. I can't have to reveal it just yet, but I guarantee sure that what I found will steal the killer's breath from his lungs. Probably has something to do with the poster. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Miss mm -hmm. Ludenberg said that she witnessed something worthwhile too. Really, what did she see? She refused to tell me. It's like when a girl bullies the boy she likes, right? Right? <laughs> so where's Celeste now? The warehouse by the dorms. She was there, but at the same time, not there. What's it gonna be? All right, we have to go talk to her too. Okay, what the heck? Oh, she's leaving. You have something to do besides the investigation? What is it? Wow. Nothing you need to worry about. Just concentrate on the murder. But so before I go, let me give you one piece of advice. You should examine Chiro's body one more time thoroughly. Also, her handbook is missing. You might want to determine its whereabouts. Goodbye. That's it. I'll be praying for your success. Chiro's handbook is missing? That's definitely worth worrying about. Okay, so it's missing. But... I thought... But it was there. There was three handbooks. So we already know where, where it was. Kyoka said I should examine the body one more time. I know she said thoroughly, but I do have my limits. Well, I better give it a shot anyway. Let's see. Chiro's hands are bound with what looks like some kind of rope. The rope was used to prop her up in a kind of crucifix position. Huh? The rope has a plug. An extension cord. And Byakuya already freaking said he knew that they were in there. I don't think anyone else went in there. Wait, so it isn't a rope at all. But the more I think about it, the more that... That's not the only thing that concerns me. Chiro's fatal injury was the blow to the head, which means someone struck her in the head in order to kill her. That's right, there's the issue of her being suspended and the fatal blow. At first, I didn't see any reason to think too much about either of them, but seeing them again after looking through the Genocide Jack file, something was not quite right. What does this all mean? The one thing most likely to tie all of these mysterious mysteries together is the true nature of the rope that was used to spin Chiro. And to, figure, and, to figure out, and to figure that out, there's a certain place I need to revisit and look over again. And then we're gonna look over his case file. Okay. Well, I already know it's extension cord. We figured that out. Maybe this blow to the head was a, was a cover-up, and that's not actually what did it. But before we go back to the library, let's go down to the warehouse with uh, Celeste. Oh, never mind. I guess I still missed something. Okay, so the poster. Uh, it reminds me, the poster in the other room is... That's right. There's definitely something strange about this. The boys' locker room, there's a poster of a popular boy band. In the girls' locker room, there's a poster, poster of a Big Bob swimsuit model. The posters have been switched. Okay, yeah. Oh, it won't let me leave here either. Okay, what else is it? Hey, there's something that- okay. Something has been bothering me about the locker room. You see, you see, I like to drink a little protein coffee every time I finish exercising. What's that the other stain? Because it looked like coffee. I, I did say crap, but you know. We have protein coffee? In the warehouse, it's not the highest quality, but I don't have a lot of other options. I mix protein powder with coffee and down a glass of it after exercising. The other day, I spilled some on the carpet in the girls' locker room and it left a stain. Okay, so the carpets are switched. Which actually means that the murder took place in the guy's locker room. Confirmed, because that's why they switched the posters. But they wanted us to believe that it was in here. But why was she in the guy's locker room? That's the thing. Okay, yeah, she confirmed that it disappeared. Okay, that's what I was missing. Alright, well that confirms that. It definitely took place in there. That's very odd though. Why she would be in there. Since they're not- she's not allowed to go in there. So she must have took one of the handbooks and went in there. But why? I don't know. We're into the warehouse! Okay, I've actually never been in here, but she's in here. She obviously knows something, so we gotta find out what she knows. What are you doing here? This warehouse is amazing. It has absolutely everything one might need to live a full life. From food to clothes to towels, there's an endless supply to choose from. I see that, but- oh, did they have toilet paper though? <laughs> but- 
Have you found anything related to the case? I knew you were going to ask me that. Well, of course. We'll spit it out. So you found something. <laughs> Very well. I will tell you, and only you. Last night, I saw her here. Chihiro was in the warehouse. Really? Indeed. This was right before nighttime. Hmm? Oh. What are you doing out this late? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, wait. What's in her bag? Is that like a shirt? Oh, um. It's like workout clothes. I That's what it looks just... like. Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's go to the regulations real quick. All right, so yeah, the night time is from 10 to 7 p.m. And you can't leave, right? It's only sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory. Okay, so they can actually go out. But, you know, we all agreed to not that. All the... All the students agreed to stay inside, but obviously she broke that rule. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. Was she in here getting some protein? <sighs> she stuffed the jack into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. It's just like that she was gone. Well, that would make sense because she's probably embarrassed. Usually people, when they start working out, are embarrassed about it. They don't want to yes, really tell people indeed. about it. I assume that she was merely stocking up to go exercise in the morning, but... It would appear that she ignored the nighttime rule and headed directly to the girls' locker room. If she hadn't broken our rule, none of this would have ever, ever happened. I, I, people need to stop going outside. <laughs> you get what you deserve, I suppose. So apparently, she went to the girls' locker room late at night in order to exercise without anyone knowing. But the strange thing is, there was no trace of the jacket. Oh, wow, that's true, huh? Or the duffel bag. Which would mean that the killer would have gotten rid of it somehow. Alright, well, we could probably have to go to the incinerator again. Where else do you get rid of it at? Wait, who is on cleaning duty? Ah, that's important. Okay, well, this time it's off and there's no one here, so we can't really do anything. All right, you know, add a check, right? The extension cord was there before. Yes. Okay, now we're also going to take another look at the file as well. It's gone! Whoa! He says specifically not to take it out and someone took it out of the archive. But the only one who would, but the only one who would do something like that uh, is Byakuya. It's just so painfully obvious, isn't it? Wait a minute, the lamp's cord isn't long enough to reach the outlet from here. The last time I saw it, it was definitely on, and it was definitely right here. Oh my god. But there's no extension cord here now. I wonder if... Nice, was that it? That's gotta be the last clue. No? Really? Waifu, spill the beans. Is there anything else? Same as before. Okay, so Toko is the same as before. She won't come out and she just keeps on mumbling about uh, Jack. So I just left her there. You left her? My head was all swimming. I was getting pretty hungry. Oh yeah, don't worry. I'm gonna go head back as soon as I'm done eating. Toko's not exactly as pleasant. Oh no! Hey, what are you eating by the way? <laughs> A donut, of course! She loves donuts, I told you. There's two things I'm sure God created, outer space and donuts. I gotta say, man, donuts are so good. I remember me and my dad, even when I was little, we'd always eat donuts together, man. She was a little bit strange. She didn't really hang out with the other girls much. It was like she was trying to keep her distance away from us. Actually, Sakura said something similar. She said that even though you and her invited Chihiro to exercise with you, she always yeah, refused. Oh. And it wasn't just us either. It was like she stayed away from all of the girls. That's why... That's why she went into the freaking boys' locker room. And she stole Leon's... Uh thingy eat book whatever i don't know she talked to the boys all the time it's kind of weird to be shy around your own sex but totally fine with the opposite sex wait maybe maybe she's just a guy spoiling her the law says you can't judge a book by its cover right you think so i just never really saw her as that kind of girl all right there's her account oh is that it um so uh I'm getting tired of waiting. Shall we just plunge right in? Dang it, where was Bialki? It's the, the moment you've all been waiting for. The class trial. You remember where to meet, right? Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. Begin the class trial or it's about to begin. The red door is right through here. I guess we're gonna have to save it for next episode. <laughs> Today's Squib of the Day goes to... Arena! Hey, thank you for smashing that like! As always, guys, if you want to see next episode on the Clash Trial, you gotta hit that like goal. 30k freaking likes.
Can we do it? I know we can. It's not even a, is it even a question? We can totally do it. Thank you guys so much for the support. I love you, Scrubs, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye, guys.